SJ. Welcome to Muskogee Radio, your weekly source for tribal and community news, interesting guests and discussions, plus a local events calendar. SJ Stone Go, Gary Five Jolly Gifted Us, uh, Muskogee Radio, Mabu Hedge, oh, which, excuse me there. Uh, welcome to our program one more time. Uh, we're uh, enjoying this gorgeous spring weather that's finally caught up with us, and hopefully it will be uh, like this for several months now. We have uh, several things to share with you today. Uh, first of all, um, in our uh, Creek uh, Mound Courthouse the uh, last week, uh, the important case revolving uh, around the uh, Freedmen's citizenship was uh, before the judge there, and um, both sides, uh, both the Freedmen and the, uh, and the Muskogee Creek Nation presented their views. We have uh, some background information we'll be sharing with you, and then uh, some cuts uh, from uh, both sides uh, outlining their positions in regards to the case. Um, and then uh, about halfway through, we'll be speaking with Senator Mark Wayne Mullins. He has introduced a, uh, a measure into the uh, United States Congress that deals with uh, access to guns for American Indian people uh, on reservations and uh, what... Uh, what needs to be cleared up there. So that's an interesting topic. And then uh, finally, we have um, uh, respect the environment uh, fact, uh, information coming up later on. Our dear friends in the environmental services folks uh, have a couple of things coming up. Uh, our annual uh, recycle day. And um, we'll be sharing some of the information from that. But first of all, uh, let me uh, give you some background information on the Friedman case, if you're, if you're not familiar with it. And it is uh, something that uh, uh, has been uh, stirring up a lot of strong emotions lately. Um, first of all, the, uh, the, the jury trial did take place on April 4th last week in a civil lawsuit seeking Muskogee Creek Nation citizenship were two Creek Freedmen descendants. Now that was uh, a case that's been going on for some time uh, involving this topic and issue. And this was the, uh, the latest uh, legal examination and discussion of, of the topic. Uh, the position, uh, petition was filed in the uh, Muskogee Creek Nation District Court and it seeks a declaratory judgment from the court that all Creek Freedmen's descendants are Creek citizens under Article II of the 1866 Treaty. Now, um, this uh, the discussion and, uh, and action has been going on for some time. It was uh, filed before uh, District Court uh, Judge Dennett Bowser, and has yet who has not yet issued an order granting. The judgment uh, in either way. So we were expecting that uh, earlier this week, but we have not heard it. Now we will be sharing some cuts from uh, Demario Solomon Simmons. Uh, he uh, uh, said that they were putting on a compelling case. It was a clear case saying the uh, Treaty of 1866 says Creeks of African descent are entitled to full citizenship rights and benefits as any other creek. So that's the case they make. Uh, however, uh, on the flip side of that coin, the Muskogee Creek Nation Attorney General Jerry Wisner issued the following statement after the hearing. The Muskogee Creek Special Judge, uh, Danette Mauser, heard the arguments in the case of uh, Rhonda Grayson and Jeffrey Kennedy versus the Citizenship Board of the Muskogee Creek Nation. Now that um, uh, application uh, for citizenship had previously been denied 
by the Citizenship Board because petitioners did not meet constitutionally imposed eligibility standards that require demonstrating Creek ancestry by blood. And as allowed by Muskogee Creek law, the petitioners appealed and uh, the uh, case proceeded to uh, uh, discussion last week. Okay, well, the uh, uh, legal scope was uh, last week was narrowly confined to consideration of the motion for summary judgment requesting a finding that the Citizenship Board had not acted consistent with Muskogee Creek law and administrative uh, um, uh, petition application for for citizenship. Now that's the case. Is it the treaty that uh, bears the uh, the uh, legal weight there, or is it the uh, essentially Muscogee Creek Nation law? Um, now, after a, a two-hour hearing that featured arguments from both sides, uh, the judge stated that she would consider and issue the ruling at a later date, which we expected earlier this week, but we have not heard anything. So it's clear that the Citizenship Board followed the law in denying plaintiff's application for citizenship. Uh, Muscogee Creek Constitution sets forth clear standards that make no, make, uh, whoops, no provision for extending citizenship to non-Creek individuals, according to Attorney General Weisner. Now, uh, arguments that f uh, failure to enroll non-Creek in in individuals as citizenship I is discriminatory, um, uh, Attorney General Weisner said, and efforts to make this case about race are legally unfounded and morally reprehensible. Now, that's an important uh, fact and uh, something that many uh, people in our state, including our governor, do not seem to understand or take into consideration in making decisions revolving around uh, the Creek Nation and its, uh, and its uh, business. Uh, petitioners are not asked to identify the race only uh, to validate their lineage as a Muscogee Creek person. Now this case about lineage-based citizenship and any assertion otherwise is blatantly false. Now that's according to the uh, Creek Nation AG. Now they're um, uh, waiting for uh, some decision in that, uh, which we expect uh, sometime uh, soon this week, but uh, we have not heard anything anything yet, uh, but uh, we're going to uh, hope that uh, something gets worked out one way or the other and uh, we'll proceed from there. Now, we did uh, understand that the, uh, the statements were quite limited after the, after the court let out. We did manage to uh, speak with DeMario Solomon Simmons, who is the attorney for the Creek Freedmen, and then Ron Graham, who has been working on the case for quite some time. And then responding uh, in a limited uh, statement, Jason Salzman, uh, the uh, press secretary for uh, for, for the chief, uh, read a statement that has been issued and uh, was not taking any questions there. So let's uh, get on to the cuts and hope that you understand this uh, very important case. And uh, remember, Muskogee Media will be following it, and as soon as we get something, we'll be putting it online. Uh, into our uh, video uh, segments and, of course, here on Muskogee Radio. In 2019, I'm going to be safe. The level of just mischaracterization and misleading was, I just never experienced that, you know. Um, but it was very clear when you look at the actual document that they said in 2019, we're not deciding this on the merits. We're not deciding this based upon whether the treaty is in force or not. We're deciding this based on the fact that he had a case in 2007, and now he's bringing the very same case, but our courts are still open, and this is just a procedural issue. And she was trying to make it something that it was not. That's why I wanted to make sure I can give the judge the actual copy. She can read for herself. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. 
Okay, what benefits are, uh, is the group looking for to gain if you get a favorable decision? Well, the first uh, benefit is back to have citizenship back into the, our rightful nation, a nation of our birth. You know, I was born a Creek citizen. I am a Creek. Uh, I'm a Creek. I am a Creek. I can go back to the late 1700s with my genealogy. I know for a fact who my people are, as do Jeff, as do Rhonda, as do so many hundreds of other people in our organization. So that's first and foremost. We want to be. We don't want to continue to be treated as second-class citizens and discriminated against based upon. Something that happened in 1906, where the federal government came in and decided who was a by blood and who was a Creek Freedman. There have been cases similar to this around the nation of different tribes. And some of the comment we've heard about this one from those who are concerned about adding the, uh, the Freedman, that it might overload the systems that we have education, medical, uh, other things. So what are your thoughts there? You know, I really don't think that. I think I think we need to think about things, um, how it can enhance the nations. I mean, you, you saw Rhonda Grayson. I mean, this is a, a so such an educated, articulate, professional, working at a Fortune 500 company. Same with Jeff, who's retired from the state of Oklahoma. I think if we think about reconciliation, I think the Cherokee Nation is a tremendous example of understanding, man, we can be greater, better, bolder, and do more for all of us if we were to come together. Because we have real enemies that want to extinguish us for real. And for us to be fighting when we could be working together, pooling resources, sharing resources, and working together, I think it would be a bit much be bigger benefit than a detriment. Okay, finally, uh, are there any plans in uh, participation in the Creek Nation government through elections or um, positions like that in the administration? You know, we haven't even thought that far. I mean, it's been such a fight just to get to this point, to have even the trial. You, As you know, this case was filed. It started in 2019, the application process. The case was filed in 2020, Mark, three years ago, over three years ago. And so we're just looking to get our citizenship, get that established, and then we can think about things from there. Where do you go from there? Yeah. But first, let's get that citizenship and uh, be able to stop the segregation and discrimination within the nation based upon race and based upon a doll's rose that was not created for the benefit of the Creek Nation. It was created to take land away from the Creek Nation citizens for white settlement. We know that. And to be utilizing that to separate families, we don't want to do that anymore. Okay, any uh, other thoughts you'd care to add, sir? No, sir. I'm good. Thank you so much. I appreciate you, though. Well, what do you think uh, of what happened today, uh, the strength of the Creek Nation's argument versus the Freedmen's uh, position? Uh, how do you assess it? Well, uh, that statement you just made, the strength of the Creek Nation, it had become even fortified. You know, this, this right here is what some of the Creek Nation citizens don't understand. This is a win-win situation. Because by complying with the Treaty of 1866, fully complying with that, including Article 2, okay, this will fortify this nation, period. And it, it, it'll make everything, it, it'll even change, they'll be able to change their constitution by, by excluding that by blood phrase. That's how the freedmen are not in uh, being citizens right today. Because that by blood phrase is in the Constitution. But but that's that's not a law. It's an unjust law, really. Because they're not complying with the Treaty of 1866, which is the supreme law of the land, period. Now, if the uh, judge were to decide in your favor, uh, what sort of benefits or uh, rights are you looking to obtain or gain? Or regain. Uh, what, what, what's, what's the sum there? Okay. Well, the, uh, we would like the judge to, uh, to rule an hour f as the Creek Nation as a whole. And once they do that, it's going to, by complying with that uh, treaty, I mean, this is our, our nation, the Creek Nation. I, I want this to stay at home. I want this to stay within our family. I don't want to go outside to federal. I do not want that. Let's make it clear. And I'm 1,000% I'm uh, in favor of sovereignty. 
I believe in it. But when your sovereignty uh, affects uh, a, a, a small portion of your tribe, such as the Creek Freedmen descendants, then it's an unjust law. But the the benefits is the benefits that the citizens receive as a Muscogee Creek citizen. The housing, medical, uh, uh, any, any type of uh, payment that they receive, those are the benefits. The, we want to be treated equal. We don't want anything more, nothing less. And we won't receive that anyway, you know. So we just want our equal, we, don't, we want it to be equal. I have uh, less questions, and I'll get out of your way here. Um, do you have, uh, has anyone discussed any plans in participation within uh, uh, the uh, administration and government of the Creek Nation, uh, politics, uh, chief, uh, whatever? No, no, I, I haven't heard that. Even myself, I haven't uh, did anything like that. And I've been doing this for, I've been trying to obtain my citizenship. I've been trying to obtain my citizenship since 1983. That was the first year. Uh, matter of fact, it will be May of, the, of this year. Next month of this year, I will have been trying to do this. I've been doing this for 40 years, 40 years. So, but but no, I haven't heard anyone or no one say, and including myself, to actually say that uh, we want to run for any type of officers or anything. Our main concern right now is citizenship, getting our citizenship and becoming full citizens. I even hope and pray at one time that the Constitution take that stipulation or that verbiage out that says uh, you have to be one quarter or more to run for office. I don't like that. The that, blood quantum. Yes, yeah, the blood quantum. You know, I, I, I hope one day they can take that out. Because th that right there, I can show you proof what that's all about. Uh, but I, I wish one day they can even take that out. We're all equal. Well, one of the arguments we've heard in cases like this uh, from different parts of the nation, Cherokees and whatever, uh, that the addition of this, adi uh, this population could possibly overload the systems in place now, like the health departments, uh, education, uh, and whatever, housing, uh, that could have a, an effect there. What are your thoughts? I mean, of course, it may have little effect, but it's going to be a good effect for the nation, okay? I believe this nation that uh, uh, we're, 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 we're together, we're family, and I believe our God, our, uh, I believe our Lord is not going to let this happen to this nation because the Bible says our nation is destroyed because of lack of knowledge. We have the knowledge to do better things. We have the knowledge to do uh, better things for our citizens here in, in the Muscogee Creek Nation. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Appreciate it. At the conclusion of two days of oral arguments and witness testimony before the court, the plaintiffs have failed to produce a single shred of compelling evidence to show that the Muscogee Creek Nation Citizenship Board acted unlawfully. The board properly applied the standards of citizenship to the applications submitted by the plaintiffs. Non-Creek individuals do not qualify for citizenship in the Muscogee Creek Nation. We believe the law is clear. We look forward to Judge Miles' decision. That last voice, of course, was Jason Salzman reading a statement on behalf of the Muscogee Creek Nation. Uh, at that point, they would not uh, offer up any other information or respond to questions. And so uh, we're all now still uh, waiting to hear from the judge about uh, what her decision is regarding the petition for, of the Freedmen for Citizenship. All right, now we want to uh, use some of our time here today to to uh, share some very important announcements and some stuff that uh, you might want to participate in. Uh, and then uh, about halfway through the show today, we will speak with Senator Mark Wayne Mullen regarding access to firearms for Native Americans. He has introduced... Uh, um, a legislation to protect the Second Amendment rights 
of Native Americans. And so he will be uh, hopefully calling us in and we'll be chatting with him for a short period. Um, now, getting back to some of the information we'll be sharing here, um, uh, something very important uh, and involves um, our Muskogee Media Department. The uh, Muskogee News, the tribal newspaper issued twice a month, uh, will be featuring Muskogee Nation High School, Military, Technical School, and College graduates in the upcoming June 1st edition of the Muskogee News. Now, that's the June 1st edition. And... Uh, uh, remember, and the most important thing here is the deadline. That is May the 12th, uh, excuse me, May the 12th, 2023 at 5 p.m. And we're sorry we have to do that, but in, time, uh, in order for our layout people and our printer to handle that additional load, we've got to get it done and then make sure that we get it out to our, our citizens by June the 1st. So uh, if you're interested, if you're a graduate uh, of uh, any of those uh, uh, um, academic efforts, school, uh, military, technical school, and college graduates, uh, please provide us with the following information accompanied with a digital photo file via email to info at muskogeemedia.com that's info at muskogeemedia.com. No later than Friday, May the 12th, by 5 p.m. And if it's after that, we're just going to have to issue our regrets and say, I'm sorry, you know, we tried to let everyone know ahead of time, and so uh, there's no such thing as ending time here. So May the 12th, 5 p.m., in order to be published in the 2023 Muskogee News Graduation Edition. Now, we want to stress that so, so many times. We had about uh, less than a dozen folks come in and uh, wanted uh, their material published, but we could not help them. So, if you don't, um, if you um, submit your material and you do not receive an emailed confirmation of the receipt, please call the office at 918-732-7720 to verify that the profile has been received. And that's important because we did catch a couple that somehow got caught, caught up in the, uh, in the mix and was not forwarded to our layout folks. So we fixed that in time. But uh, make sure that you get the confirmed uh, uh, confirmation of receipt and I call the office to verify the profile has been received. Now, our profiles will be edited for Associated Press style, structure, grammar, spelling, length, and punctuation. So, here's an idea. 2023 graduate profile form. We need your, let's see here, we need your name. The high school, college, technical institute, or military program that you're graduating from. And we need a biographical description. A bio should be a 150 word limit. And if it's longer than that, chances are that it must be cut back. Now, once again, May 12, 2023, at 5 p.m., you can hand it in uh, in person at our office uh, in the South, uh, southeast corner of the, uh, of the campus. But understand that late profiles will not be accepted. And uh, we just uh, want to say, hey, you know, we're, we're letting you know as the as, 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 uh, best way we know how and repeat it again and again. The late profiles will not be accepted. So give us a call at 918-732-7720. Now, uh, we have uh, probably folks on, uh, on the uh, desk that will be uh, accepting uh, your material or trying to answer questions for you. So we want you to understand that uh, we're going to do everything we can to get them all in. But uh, a lot of it is, is on you to make that deadline, May 12th, 5 p.m. 
Okay, while well, we're uh, looking forward to uh, several uh, uh, minutes with our, our Senator Mark Wayne Mullen, we'll still share some information here. Now, April is Sexual Assault Awareness Month, and we want you to know that our folks and staff here at the Muscogee Creek Nation have had uh, several uh, things going on and want uh, you to participate and recognize this important issue. Now, uh, last week they had Chalk the Walk in front of the mound and uh, the door decorating contest is coming up. If you will hang on, we'll see if that is our senator. Okay, our senator has called in a little bit early, so let's uh, take advantage of the of the extra time and uh, speak with him. Okay, Senator Mullen, you with me, sir? Yes, sir, I am. Okay, well, thank you. Once again, we want to uh, 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 tell you we appreciate your time. I know I was in D.C. for about 11 years and survived that, but knowing how busy people are inside the Beltway and particularly up on the hill. So once again, thank you, sir. Now, uh, the uh, issue that caught my attention and uh, prompted our call was you have, uh, and uh, Senator Peltola of Alaska have uh, introduced legislation to protect the Second Amendment rights of Native Americans. Now, uh, when we saw that, we thought, well, you know, what's What's the problem there? I thought all Americans had had these rights, but uh, in particular, Native Americans may be uh, uh, needing a, a little backup there. So, first of all, could you explain your legislation? Yeah. So this started with a real ID. Um, a lot of uh, we've noticed a lot of Native Americans, especially some of the older Native Americans, haven't received their real ID because it's difficult. Uh, they, they may not have their birth certificate anymore, or they may not have had one. Uh, they, have a, they, they don't have their Social Security card anymore. Uh, they're having a hard time producing two forms of ID outside of their driver's license that, have, that may have already expired. And, uh, and when that happens, they're just using their government or their, their tribal ID uh, from either you know, Muscogee Creek Nation or, or the Choctaws or Chickasaws or whatever tribe that they are uh, privileged to be part of. What we've ran into now, though, is that they can't buy a firearm uh, with a legal ID. It's a legal ID that you can fly with, um, you, can, you can travel with, but you can't buy a firearm. What's crazy is that a foreigner with a, with a, uh, a valid passport from, uh, I just, I'll just throw out a country here, and it really depends on country by country, so I don't know if these are countries that you can buy a farm inside the United States anyways or not. But I'll just say Mexico and Canada. Uh, I'm not saying these are actual ones that can purchase a gun in, inside the United States, but I'm just using those, those countries as, as an example. If they have a, a valid passport, they're able to purchase a gun inside the United States. But a tribal member with a tribal ID cannot, even though it's recognized by the federal government. So uh, basically what, uh, what our bill does is it, it, it allows, um, it, it amends Section 90, 922D, Title 18, to include a valid tribal or tribal government ID as a form of ID to purchase firearms. So it's, it's real simple. It's just amending the, the existing code, um, which all other areas of the government accepts tribal ID, except underneath purchasing um, a, a firearm, which is this is what the uh, um, this is what they said needed to be amended, amended so they could take care of it. So we don't think there's going to be any pushback on it, really, but you never know because right now anything you do with the Second Amendment uh, and, and purchasing guns can get uh, kind of finicky in D.C., it gets kind of finicky everywhere, I'd say. Um, it, that's an issue that sort of raises the fur on the back of a lot of people's necks very quickly. 
Now, um, you're talking about the real ID issue. Now, some years ago, I uh, had used a tribal ID to get on a flight to uh, to Alaska, and um, um, had no problem there because I had forgotten my Oklahoma license. But they accepted that. And then uh, recent years and subsequent years, uh, I've uh, purchased handguns and uh, flashed the IDs that I had, including a driver's license and a tribal ID, and had no problem there. Now, how, are you aware of situations where people are being denied uh, the, uh, uh, their rights under the Second Amendment? Yes. Uh, well, it, it's just when they're trying to use a tribal, uh, tribal ID, a lot of uh, driver's licenses are expiring now that wasn't real ID. And once they expire, it really causes a, even a more, even a bigger issue to get the new uh, real ID driver's license because now you can't use your driver's license as a form of ID. So we're seeing a lot of uh, tribal members, and I say not, I say a lot, uh, several, quite a few. My office has, has uh, have received phone calls when I was in the house uh, as a House member and already as a senator as, in the Senate, uh, where people are having uh, trouble because they're calling us and saying that's how the, it, the, it got brought to our attention. They call us and they said, "Hey, the, the uh, ATF isn't accepting our travel ID, which is a legal form of, of an ID, as uh, to be able to purchase a gun." And we was like, "Well, uh, that's." This will be simple. It's just clarification. It must be the place you're purchasing it that doesn't realize what they're doing. And that's when we found out that no, underneath the ATF, they do not accept it. So, um, and like I said, a lot of this has to do with their license, their driver's license are now expired, and so they cannot use it to purchase a firearm. As long as you're, you don't have to have a real ID to purchase a firearm, but your driver's license has to be, um, they have to be valid. They can't, they can't be expired. And that's the, and you're, we're going to get more and more of this, especially throughout Indian country, if we don't get this problem uh, resolved. Now, are you um, aware of situations here within Oklahoma where uh, this problem has been uh, um, occurring or has been dealt with? Sure. Uh, yeah, that, that's where it came from. That's where the that's where the issue, uh, Gary, first came to came to our attention was Oklahoma uh, constituents of mine wasn't able to purchase a firearm because uh, because they didn't have a, uh, uh, the only ID they had that was valid was their tribal ID. Okay, well, um, that's, uh, as I say, a hot topic. Now, um, our Congress has been uh, uh, kind of on both sides of many issues, including uh, Second Amendment changes and things like that. Uh, what do you expect when, uh, I, I presume the uh, S-909 has been introduced, uh, do you getting any feedback there? Uh, uh, you mentioned resistance or people a bit reluctant to maybe get behind it? Well, we're, it's got to go through the uh, Native Affairs Committee and the Senate, first of all, uh, because we, have, we, don't have, uh, we don't have primary jurisdiction over it, but we have jurisdiction over it because it deals with uh, a, a tribal ID, uh, and so um, it, it, we will we will see how it goes there. Uh, so far, the chairman of the committee hasn't really weighed in on it one way or the next. Uh, I just think it's going to be. They would probably want this to be what we call hotline, where it goes through without any debate. Uh, I don't. I, I really don't believe that the Democrats want to debate this issue. Because it'll become a Second Amendment issue, and then it'll be it'll put it, it'll put them at odds with the tribes. And if it puts them at odds with the tribes, then they're going to have to ex- explain why a tribal ID won't work, and so that'll put them against sovereignty, which is a sticky issue in Indian country, right? If you're not for sovereignty, you're against us. And um, and so I, I I think they will pre- they will prefer this to stay out of actual debate. And move straight uh, to uh, to a hotline system to where, if no members object, it will be um, it will be able to go right through. Well, that's uh, pretty much like quicksand if you get into those discussions. Right, it does. It, it gets it gets into a pretty big issue at that point. Now, uh, court, yeah, it was particularly with the number of shootings we've seen uh, uh, in the past few weeks and days practically uh, and uh, 
Well, news sources have discovered that many of these uh, weapons used in those uh, tragedies were, were legally purchased. Uh, uh, do you think uh, uh, that's going to have any bearing on this issue, you know, like the types of, uh, uh, of weapons or, or when or whatever? Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Um, but every time something like that happens, the Democrats want to go after, uh, they uh, go after our firearms. But what I remind people all the time, you cannot legislate, um, uh, you can't legislate morality and crazy. Uh, you know, you just, you just can't. Uh, those are, you can try all you want, do everything you want to try to, to make it feasible. Uh, but you can have all the legislation in the world. And all the legislation you, you, you can think of that you're trying to prevent strategies from happening, and it's not going to happen. Uh, but that doesn't mean anything. That just, that just means you've got a lot of Democrats that are anti-Second Amendment, period, because they fear things they don't understand. And they're going to use any avenue they can to highlight their issue and try to make their point for political purposes. Uh, this should be completely out of that conversation. This has to do with recognizing sovereignty inside of a, inside of uh, Indian country, and if it if they if they believe in sovereignty, then that should be something that's accepted, and tribal ID should be accepted without without hesitation to be able to purchase whatever you want, including a, a rifle. The uh, next question is kind of a sidebar to the issue, but uh, I think it's important. Uh, will this have any effect on, on states' laws uh, concerning things like uh, concealed carry or uh, any other? No. no, no, this just this just amends the code that to allow a tribal ID to be accepted like any other form of ID. Uh, that's it, it, there is no it, 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 all it does is 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 amid the, amend the code to allow tribal ID, which is a government issued ID, to be accepted to purchase a firearm. Right, I'm pretty pretty proud to flash mine when I need to. Now uh, I understand uh, one of the co-sponsors on the House side was uh, uh, Representative Mary uh, Patola of uh, Alaska. And I lived there for some time and, uh, and got the opportunities to get out and about uh, in, the, uh, in the woods and the hills and mountains and things like that. And a firearm is a different different discussion up there. Um, it could be a, a matter of life and death. I mean, uh, if you don't have a rifle or something with you when you're out in the woods and you get uh, surprised by a bear, you're in deep trouble unless you can defend yourself. Now, did you have some discussion with her about uh, this issue? I haven't talked to her at, at, at all about it. <laughs> okay, well, I presume there might be some time when you might have to share some ideas there, or is this... Well, I've talked to Dan Sullivan, uh, who is the senator from from there, and Mikowski, uh, the, senator, the senator from there. I've dealt with them on the issue, but I haven't dealt with her on the issue. Not, not, I haven't I just... That, that's a different bill from the Senate bill versus the House bill. Is it a uh, significant difference? I, um, I, I, the way I understand is that she uh, took our bill and is trying to run it through the House. Okay, well, let's have some luck there. Uh, now, um, well, we could get into the issue of tribes in Alaska, but uh, let's not. Now, what's the future? Do we have any sort of... Uh, a timeline a a involved uh, with uh, looking at this bill or a no. any hurdles or uh, challenges um i don't um i don't i don't believe so uh i as i said it, it, it it's just a matter of how we proceed with it but you never know when the hurdles come out when you're dealing with anything with the second amendment but i don't i can't per foresee what the issue would be because it puts them in a bad position and as far as timing uh, timing moves at its own pace. Sometimes timing on bills like this can get moving pretty quick, and sometimes it, it's, it moves about as fast as cold molasses. And so I, I don't know the I don't know the exact timing. We don't control that, unfortunately. Chuck Schumer and the Democrats will control what they what they allow to, to either be hotlined or, or go to or go to the floor for a vote. Right there is quite a let's call it a hierarchy and. In many cases right. involving uh, legislation on the Hill. 
All right. Well, uh, right. that's uh, everything uh, that that came to the top of my head regarding this issue. Is, this, right. is there something else there? Or uh, uh, while I got nope. you, is there any other uh, Native American issues that you will be dealing with uh, in the near future? Well, that's an open-end question, Gary, that we probably don't have time to get into right now. There's a lot of issues we're dealing with, but um, we'll have to discuss that at a different time. Okay, well, I thought I'd take a shot at it. All right. That's no pun intended. Right. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I right. appreciate it. Uh, right. we, yeah, I look forward to talking to you again. All right. Appreciate it. Bye. Okay. That was our uh, Senator Mark Wayne Mullen regarding uh, Senate Bill 909, which uh, would protect the Second Amendment um, uh, rights of Native Americans and their access to uh, purchasing firearms using a tribal ID. So uh, let's uh, hope that they work that one out and there aren't too many other nasty surprises. Okay, where are we here in our program? Uh, we've used up most of our material here. Now, if uh, we're going to open up our, our phone lines here if someone uh, has any other uh, questions about perhaps the Friedman uh, 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 petition before the courts or even the Second Amendment rights, uh, you can give us a call here at... Uh, 918-756-3646. In the meantime, there is a lot of material here still to share that uh, we'd like to uh, make uh, our listeners aware of. And first, uh, uh, first thing I'd like to, to, to read with, for you and share with you is uh, some really, I think, wonderful news um, regarding uh, the... Uh, Women's Honor Guard here at the Muscogee Creek Nation, the Estajati Hokdogi Siladawa Honor Guard, and that's what my pronunciation was, approval, or I'll, I'm sure I'll be hearing from Ms. Barnett. Um, the uh, Honor Guard was adopted into legislation and held its first meeting back in November and uh, is on its way to becoming a... a, a really recognized by our own people and other tribes uh, and is backed by uh, the appropriate legislation. Uh, a few facts that were mentioned in the bill were that uh, Native Americans serve in the armed forces at five times the national average. They have served in every major conflict for over 200 years and Native Americans have the highest per capita involvement of any population to serve in the U.S. military. Now, um, let me add a footnote to that particular uh, fact that uh, Native Americans have participated in every conflict this uh, United States uh, had, even before it was the United States. Uh, there were battles with the French and the uh, uh, British and American uh, revolutionary forces in the founding of this nation, and so we were there. Um, we had fought on both sides of the uh, Civil War. Uh, our, our warriors uh, were in blue and gray, and uh, we ended up losing uh, from both sides, so that one didn't work out. Uh, nearly 20% of Native American service members are women, compared to approximately 15% of all other ethnic groups of women service members. So I'm proud of that. Wonderful, Octis. Uh, there's a need for a women's honor guard to be established to represent the Muscogee Creek Nation at parades, military funerals, and other various gatherings. Now, the uh, council unanimously, unanimously passed a bill which established the women's honor guard and appropriated the funds for its implementation. Now, you got to have the money to to make it happen. Representative Adam Marshall sponsored the legislation from the beginning. And I want to say my daughter. The legislation moved through health, education, and welfare committees, and during those uh, discussions, uh, uh, um, Speaker William Lowe requested to uh, co-sponsor it. And there's a Marine veteran for you there. And before voting on the bill, uh, Leonard Gouge asked also to co-sponsor it, and Marshall agreed. All right. Uh, uh, an important thought here is uh, Representative Sandra Golden started the discussion um, by saying, I didn't really want to support this because it makes women separate from the men. And it looks as if the men can't acknowledge 
the women because of something different, but they should be the same. She continued, if this is the only way we're going to get that attention and that acknowledgement, then uh, um, I'm going to vote for it. The uh, legislation's passing a historic event for the Muscogee Nation and its citizens after a 15 to nothing vote. Speaker Lowe had the women's veterans stand for recognition and received a standing ovation from those in attendance. Uh, and uh, they had uh, open the floor to discussion at that moment. Now, the veterans continue to share their experiences and gratitude for this decision and their wonderful uh, approval for their presence in a formal fashion. Now, this is monumental to give us a separate voice and not for us to fall underneath our brothers, whom I'll always love serving with, but it does give us a voice, uh, which is incredibly important. All right, uh, David Hill and William Lowe have wasted no time signing that legislation. The uh, women veterans met in the council chambers immediately after the uh, regular session, I presume, to uh, celebrate, to, uh, to uh, laud its passage. And there were uh, eight female veterans. They discussed budgets, uniforms, possible upcoming events, and meetings, and even more. And... Uh, Veterans came from all over to participate in the historic decision and join the uh, Women's Honor Guard there. Uh, they are uh, a small unit right now, but are looking for other uh, eligible uh, veter women veterans to uh, come join us and be part of that Honor Guard. We know that uh, the Muscogee Creek Nation Honor Guard is called on uh, a lot to uh, attend various uh, observances, to funerals, to celebrations, parades, and things that uh, show our pride in the Muscogee Creek Nation. Um, let me share requirements to join. Here I am uh, acting like their recruitment uh, officer here. Having, and which I did, <laughs> did not serve, so I was never an officer. Uh, requirements to join include being a fe female veteran, having an honorable discharge other than honorable discharge are considered, uh, being a committed active member by participating in meetings, making regalia, attending drills, events, and funeral rites, and assisting with public outreach. Now, um, the, uh, the responsibilities there are quite, quite uh, strenuous, and so it's not just an easy ride and walk around uh, uh, showing your, your uniform. There's a lot in that commitment. And uh, one of the things we heard uh, that I'd love to pass on is, to all Muscogee women veterans, welcome home. So we're wonderful. I'm just so proud to share that. Uh, I know that our, uh, our now our former colleague, uh, um, Kalea Berry was uh, Kalea Berry was uh, um, a reporter on our staff, and of course uh, covered this one as a uh, something near and dear to her heart. She's moved on to working in a veterans program, I believe, uh, in. Um, repatriation and we wish her all the luck in the world there and uh, hopefully uh, there's something we can do to continue supporting her so good luck with it Clea. All right here's some more information we like to share with you that uh, might be really useful. Uh, where are we here? Oops forgive my burp there. Uh, on the 14th coming up this weekend is a door decorating contest yeah, that's Friday. You can decorate your office door in support of Sexual Assault Awareness Month and use the theme Step Forward, Prevent, Report, Advocate. And you can send a, a, a picture in your submission to uh, Ma Atabo at MuscogeeNation.com. Then there's a survival's, Survivor's Walk in Eufaula. And uh, that will be happening on the 19th. Uh, if you're interested, uh, they would love for you to, to join them. Uh, and that will be under one roof from 12 to 1. So I presume that's a 
That's a nice, nice covered place to do that. A survivor's walk on uh, April 21st of Altmulgee, here in Altmulgee, a walking trail behind Lighthorse. So join us and the SANE program as they walk to show support for survivors of sexual violence and renew the commitment to increasing safety across the reservation. Now, T-shirts will be provided while supplies last. Okay, and on April 26th, it's Denim Day. Wear your best denim. Citizens and community members are encouraged to wear denim to bring awareness to victim-blaming and destructive myths that surround sexual violence. So, hmm, I've been supporting them for quite a while. we will be glad to wear a denim once more. So, for more information, call 918-732-7979. Okay, what do we got uh, coming up here? Mm, the um, On the 15th, that's this weekend, a breakfast sale in Flea Market from 8 to 1 p.m. Uh, that's at the Yardika Indian Community in Henrietta. That's 114089 South 3980 Road in Henrietta. So uh, if you have information, you want to make an inquiry, you can call Mike. Seven, excuse me, 918-650-9045. Now, it sounds good. Uh, breakfast, uh, you can have your choice here. Biscuits and gravy, sausage, uh, eggs, potatoes, and drink. Flea market setup. Ten bucks, not bad, huh? You must obtain a sales permit, though, through the tax commission and can call Mike to get an application. And that's important that we comply with our own laws there okay now where are we here we got a few minutes left i want to stretch this out a little further and remind you if you have a comment you wanted to share on uh, any of the topics we've had on our program today give me a call 918-756-3646 and we do have a few minutes to squeeze some of those in now, if we could help out a uh, gentleman who is involved in armored combat. You uh, know what a knight, the knights in armor are look like and the uh, equipment that they use? This will, uh, they have a, uh, competitions coming up where they get into full combat, and I've seen them using pole arms on each other, so... Uh, ouch. But uh, Heath Sutherland, a Sand Springs native, has qualified to fight on a USA team at the IMFC World Championship in Belmonte, Spain. And he needs help to get there. So if you could uh, give him a call, if you can uh, participate. Um, uh, Heath Sutherland, and he is a knight. And this year he qualified to resent represent the United States in the International Armored Combat Tournament in Belmonte, Spain. So uh, this Saturday, they've got a golf tournament, April 15th, uh, four-man scramble, etc., etc. Um, prizes awarded, uh, the canyons at Blackjack Road in Sand Springs. So RSVP Wendell, 918-724-1665, or give uh, Rita a call. 918-638-2626. Okay, and where are we here? Uh, April 29th from 8 to 3, we have um, Tulsa Creek Indian Community Spring Fling Arts and Crafts Sale. They're looking for vendors, uh, 10 bucks a table, and all uh, uh, vendors must fill out the tribal vendor sales application. So for a vendor, uh, call 918-298-2464. Okay, we've got a few other, a couple of other items here. The um, Muskogee Creek Nation's higher education program is uh, offering a, st a stole program, uh, the uh, wonderful, colorful uh, um, like banner-like uh, fabrics worn around the, the necks and shoulders of eligible students who are graduating. The uh, students may receive a red and white fabric stole featuring the Muscogee Nation seal to wear at their graduation ceremonies. And we understand there should be no problem with uh, native regalia being added to graduation uh, uh, caps and gowns. So uh, this would be a 
a wonderful uh, uh, showing there. I stole it for students to keep as a reminder of the support and encouragement they received from the nation and all their hard work in achieving their educational goals. Uh, to apply, students should contact their uh, Muskogee Creek Nation Higher Education Grant Advisor and complete an application. So it would be wonderful if you uh, could, could wear our colors in your graduation. Uh, to apply, again, uh, a Higher Education Grant Advisor and complete an application. So if you want more information, contact the Higher Education Office at 918-732-732. 7676 or email higher at muskogeenation.com. And to be eligible, let's see here, you have to be an enrolled citizen of the Muskogee Creek Nation. Uh, students participating in MCN Higher Education Associate, Bachelor, Master, or doctoral level programs and graduating from their institution. So you have to be among those lucky groups, those groups who have strived and slaved through their educational process to uh, be eligible for a tribal stole. So at the Muskogee Creek Nation Graduation Stole Program, once again, 918-732-7661 or email higher ed at muskogeenation.com. Okay, uh, where am I here? Uh, Muskogee Creek Nation will host its second annual Muskogee Art uh, Show coming up um, two full days featuring work by over 60 artists from across the nation. So after their uh, successful inaugural year last year, the uh, art market returns to the Ca River Spirit Casino Resort in Tulsa, and that will be April 22nd and 23rd. Now, a uh, wide variety of artwork from paintings and sculptures to textiles, carvings, pottery, and more will be on display and available, available for purchase. Um, pieces entered for... Uh, um, uh, competitive uh, uh, for competition rather and awards will be presented for best in show muskogee heritage award and a judge's award and the four top pieces in e each artistic category will be will be honored okay uh, one thing we darn near forgot here the muskogee creek nation office of environmental services so if you folks over there were wondering where I was in mentioning this, here it is. Uh, the Office of Environmental Services is conducting, is celebrating 10 years at the Recycle Center and uh, Earth Day coming up. A couple of things that I uh, really want you to participate in, and I understand that uh, it's been pretty pretty well supported in the past, but uh, last year it slacked off a little bit from uh, uh, other challenges we were, were dealing with. But... Um, Friday, April 14th, is the Community Cleanup Event. The registration will be at the MCN Tribal Executive Building Canopy at 1230. Now, this will be the cleanup where you put on your vest and take a bag and go out and try and clean up uh, Creek Country here on our campus. Now, the routes are still to be determined, and crews will clean from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. Gloves, bags, vests, hand sanitizers, and bottled water will be provided to volunteers. Uh, afterwards, volunteers will meet at the Tribal Recycling Center for fellowship, cookout, t-shirts, and prizes. Now, I remember some nice hot dogs I got from them. So, you want to be a part of the Friday, April 14th cleanup event. Now, on the 21st, the following Friday, there's free document shredding from... 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Now, um, due to the limited capacity of the shredding truck, it will be first come, first served, and you must stay with your documents while they are being shredded. No books, three ring binders, large clips, or magazines. So, a free electronic recycling from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. You, know, you drop off those old VCRs and DVDs and out of... Uh, out of uh, uh, anyway, old TVs, you know, the old 
turn the channel kind of thing. Uh, TVs, monitors, cell phones, small appliances, and other electronics for sale and responsible recycling. Uh, other uh, items accepted, white goods such as washers, dryers, refrigerators, freezers, and all doors must be removed. We don't want uh, some child getting in there to play and then a tragedy recur occurs afterwards. So all doors must be removed from those appliances. Automobiles, batteries, and alkaline batteries will be accepted, but no lithium batteries. Now, I understand some of those things have been causing fires around the nation, and you don't want that to happen. Okay, uh, you got some old tires around, uh, you can get them off there. But oh. You've been listening to Muskogee Radio. Join us again next week for more local, tribal, and community news and updates. Middle.